The Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game has over 10,000 unique cards for players to collect, trade, and construct their own personal decks. But what would happen if players only had access to the bare minimum? In this series, both the RJB0 and myself will each open a very select amount of sealed product. Once we open that product, we must build a deck using only those specific cards pulled, that's it. And at the end of each episode, we discard the entirety of our pulls to the the graveyard and start from scratch with a new product. Every card counts. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! Sealed Showdown. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, the first win of Sealed Showdown goes to yours truly. I never thought in my life I'd be summoning Flower Wolf, especially in this day and age, but here we are. But we quickly move on to the next set, which is Metal Raiders. And do keep in mind, all those Fishers, that Pot of Greed, all those cards we got in the previous episode are gone. It's a clean slate. We have 24 new packs of Metal Raiders to open, and we have a bunch of new strategies that we have to develop in order to take down Rob. Robert once more. So Metal Raiders is an interesting set. It's definitely a higher powered set, but for different reasons than LOB. The first of which we can see right here in the fact that we have summoned Skull in the Ultra Rare slot as a 2500 attack one tribute monster. If one of us pulls this, this might be just like game over, but there is some removal in this pack, so it's not the end of the world, but Summon Skull will wreak havoc in this format if one of us pulls it. That did not go according to plan. Now, I don't know what I expected out of my great grand re-entrance into the game of Yu-Gi-Oh, but I don't think humiliated by Flower Wolf was the particular flavor of disaster that I was expecting, but fear not. I have an opportunity today to beat Alex in a meta that is nearly as terrible as Legend of Blue Eyes. I am, of course, talking about Metal Raiders, which, rather than Legend of Blue Eyes' reliable access to easy high defense point monsters, gives you risky access to high attack point monsters. And amidst that, a variety of rare cards and high rarity cards that can add some spice to any given deck. What's interesting about Metal Raiders is that while, of course, the high attack point monsters like Dark Elf and Jirai Gumo do make up the majority of what you want to make sure is in your deck, it also offers a variety of things that approach real strategy. Whether you get a larger concentration of things like Magician of Faith and control spell cards like the Equip Spell Paralyzing Potion, or you could go into a much more aggro-centric strategy involving things like Seven Colored Fish. There are some great one tribute and two tribute monsters in here. And then there are absolute haymakers like Mirror Force. It's really interesting how you can expect the rares and high rarity things to slightly alter your plan going into deck building with a variety of absolutely garbage cards that are probably going to have to make it into the deck one way or another. I look forward to the set, but let's take a look at it in a little bit more detail. The biggest difference between LOB and Metal Raiders is how many more effect monsters enter the game. Take Mask of Darkness, right? It's the trap equivalent to Magician of Faith, flipping up and adding a trap card from our graveyard to our hand. Magician of Faith is in here as well, adding spells back to hand. Even White Magical Hat. There's a lot more monsters that do things in this set, and so it's not going to be as static as, you know, sitting on 2,000 defense point monsters and passing most of the time. We can be a little bit more proactive, and that means games are going to be a little bit quicker. The three gate cards guardian pieces, possibly the most powerful monsters we're going to have access to. They have 2600, 2500, and 2400 attack respectively, and they have an interesting effect which allows them to reduce an opponent's attack monster's attack to zero. The funny thing about this is with the exception of Kazejin, Sangha of the Thunder and Suijin are two of the most powerful monsters you're going to run into, which makes it highly unlikely that you're going to need to reduce a monster's attack to zero. One way or another, they're powerful monsters with a good amount of attack points that are probably going to be worth running if we get them. Tribute to the Doomed is a very good piece of removal if we do manage to pull it because it does come in at the super rare slot, but discard a card, target a monster and destroy it. It is a two for one, but it's a spell based piece of removal. So you really can't pass that up. Change of Heart's also broken, but it's ultra rare. So we're going to have to pull very well in order to get this. Sangin and Witch of the Black Forest are two of the best cards in here. I'm hoping to get mostly witches because the cards we're looking for are high attack point monsters, but 
but Sangin will also get us things like Magician of Faith, which I won't disagree with having. We also do have the high rolling threat that is Jirai Gumo. This is a 2200 attack four star monster, but we have to toss a coin and possibly half our life points if we want to attack with it. Alternatively, we can just leave it in attack and sit with it. This may be a meta defining card in this format. And uh, for anyone who watched the progression series, you remember how this goes. Castle of Dark Illusions is not a 2000 defense point monster. It is a 1930 defense point monster, which is just low enough that it will get beaten by Dark Elf. However, maybe worth running if it's one of the only normal summonable monsters that we have access to. Seven colored fish is obviously the best four star monster with zero drawback. You could argue Dark Elf because it's 2000 attack, but it does cost a thousand life points to attack with the Dark Elf. 1800 is the standard here. And uh, this is common where Dark Elf is a rare. So getting a few copies of this would also be pretty nice. Barrel Dragon is another great payoff in a two tribute monster um, with the ability to destroy cards on the field and attack in the same turn sounds pretty good to me. And as we get down to the end of Metal Raiders, there's just so many cards that are so iconic, right? Solemn Judgment, Magic Jammer, Seven Tools of the Bandit, Horn of Heaven. And then there's even some decent cards down here like Shield and Sword. This is kind of removal in a way. Block Attack is actually a very decent piece of removal. Robin Goblin can just rip apart Robert's hand. And so it is rare, but getting this could be very deadly. And then even cards like Paralyzing Potion aren't terrible because Spell and Trap removal is kind of limited. And Mirror Force is just going to be a blowout. I will say this right now, I am not playing around Mirror Force because this is an ultra rare, but there's a chance that one of us could pull this and just absolutely win off of the back of this card. This card is insane. Share the Pain is a removal spell, but not nearly as good as Tribute to the Doomed. Heavy Storm is Heavy Storm, and that's just about all that we need to talk about for this. Stimpak is a 700 boost, but over time it loses you Field Presence, which is probably not excellent. Let's get to Kraken and see what crazy things we can come up with here. Aren't you guys so 24 packs of Metal Raiders coming right up. Let's go ahead and flip over the first ones and see what we get. Stim Pack is a great card for being able to buff our monsters. Equip spells are actually pretty good in a sealed format. Castle of Dark Illusions is like kind of a 2k defender, but not really. Overall, not a terrible pack. Muka Muka is kind of an interesting card. It gains 300 attack for each card in your hand. So if you just summon this and do nothing else, let's say you have a six card hand, you play this, you're now down to five. This is a 2100 attack one summon monster but that's assuming you do nothing else. But in the later to mid game, this card can be really bad if you're top decking and don't have many resources. But in the early game, this card can be a force. Well, I didn't think we were going to pull it, but there is the gate guardian. If I get the other pieces, I would love to try to summon this, but that would require us pulling three specific super rares. If we just summon this, we might as well just win the game. This is like summoning Exodia, to be honest, but I don't think we're going to be playing this, unfortunately. What? What do we have to start with? Sewage it. That is a card I like to see. Two other cards in here. I don't mind having Ryukish Empowered and Blue Winged Crown are straight power creeps over any card we got in Legend of Blue Eyes. Not a bad first pack. Second pack, Witch of the Black Forest, love to see it. And the Unhappy Maiden, that's one of those potential a couple ofs in the deck. Share the Pain, Stim Pack, Sword of the Deep Seated, all cards that are potentially going to go in there. Mask Sorcerer is actually not bad, but his stat line's a little bit to be desired. If he inflicts battle damage to the opponent, we actually get to draw a card. So it's the opposite of White Magical Hat. So we may include this, it's really hard to say. We also did get a Prevent Rat, which is a 2K defender. So we'll probably be playing this at the very least. Well, there's another Muka Muka and a super rare being Harpy Lady Sisters. This would require us to get a copy of Elegant Egotist to be able to summon. The only thing I really don't like about Harpy Lady Sisters is that it still can't attack over a 2000 point defender. So that's unfortunate, but if we get the Egotists, maybe we will consider it. Oh, here we go. This is actually a pretty good pack. We're about halfway through. We got a copy of Block Attack and Paralyzing Potion. This may be our first copies of each of these, and I'd like to see more of them because these are effectively our removal for this episode. And so the more of these we can nab the better. Witch of the Black Forest, a second one that's great to see alongside a Prevent Rat and a Germ Infection. Lots of playables in this pack. Paralyzing Potion, a Flame Cerberus, great to see another Unhappy Maiden, a Mass Sorcerer, a lot of interesting cards from here. This is an interesting opening so far. I would not call it incredibly powerful. However, I'm not going to shake a stick at it. Robin Goblin, okay, King of Yamimikai. I'm a little bit concerned that we are a third of the way through and I have seen 
neither a Dark Elf nor a Jirai Gumo. Not my favorite way to start this opening off. Well, there's another super rare, and unfortunately, it's an unplayable one being Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon. That would have been nice if it was almost literally anything else. Also getting a bit concerned, we're 15 packs in, and I don't think I've seen a single seven-colored fish yet, so that's a bit frightening. Are really? Really? Really, I get the other secret rare as well, which is actually unplayable. Technically, Gate Guardian is playable if we get very, very lucky. But wow, that is insane. Uh, there's a Sangen. Sangen is an actually very nice pull and also a second block attack. So, you know, there is a silver lining to this pack, but Thousand Dragon, oh my God, insane. Garnesia Elephantus. It's all right. I already have Sewage in, and that's probably the only two tribute that I really want to go for, but I don't mind having a beefster like that and look at that seven colored fish in the same pack. I'm getting a lot of those vanilla monsters that are going to be just reliable attack value for me. Another Paralyzing Potion and another Magician of Faith and another Paralyzing Potion. I now have the play set of Paralyzing Potions and I think three Magician of Faith, which is going to be great if we're going to be looking for a control strategy. I am not going to complain about that. Let's see if we can get some more attack value into this. White magi Magical Hat and a Thunder Drag, a Twin Headed thunder dragon this could have been any other super rare that card is actually useless due to our lack of polymerization not terribly happy about that one shadow ghoul is an interesting rare this card gains 100 attack for each monster in your graveyard while it does start out at 1600 it can grow very large very quickly it takes a while before it gets to like summon skull stats but i still might play this because i don't think i have a better tribute monster than shadow ghoul at this point there we go that's what we need there's a dark elf in the rare slot i think this is our third copy of block attack so really happy to see that we're starting to have our luck turn around a little bit here and starting to get some of the better cards at the end we got six packs left to go so let's hope for the best mm, there's a flame service and mirror force how did i look right past the mirror force it's right there holy crap okay control strategy is a go we are making this happen i'm very excited to see that card still not seeing the jirai gumos or dark elves but with the package that i have the paralyzing potions the block attacks and this mirror force i think we have a real deck to work with this time and there's a jirai gumo love to see it harpy lady sisters oh this really wants me to play a really bad strategy doesn't it i'm gonna be tempted not gonna lie okay so finally after i think eight 18 packs there's our first seven colored fish unless i've missed it up until this point but i don't think i have this pack's also pretty good because there's a paralyzing potion mask of darkness is nice but i don't even think we have any good trap cards to play with it yet so kind of wishing this was a magician of faith well i guess one twin headed thunder dragon wasn't enough because here we are pulling a second one however we did get a witch of the black forest and that is really nice to see so one sangen one witch i guess we'll take it another witch and another carnesia elephant Fontes. What is with the super rares in this set? Oh, oh well, I'm not going to complain. I've still got the Mirror Force. I've got three Witch, I think, now. This is a really fascinating opening. There's a Dark Elf and a Jirai Gumo. Oh, boy, this is this is looking great. I just need one more Jirai Gumo, maybe another Dark Elf, and I'll be happy. Another Witch of the Black Forest, because, of course, another seven-colored fish. Love to see it. Oh, this is looking so much better than Legend to blue eyes all right coming up on our last couple of packs let's see what we can pull nothing exciting out of here although having that mirror force makes that mask of darkness mighty tempting i don't think it's gonna be worth it though catapult turtle <laughs> That's a hilarious card. I don't think it's going to be worth it, but oh man, would that be funny. If this had slightly more defense, I could imagine setting it, letting it get run into by like a Jirai Gumo, and then just taking every turn to sacrifice a monster and burn Alex. I don't think it's going to work out that way, but wouldn't that be funny? Last pack. What can we get? And I didn't see that, but I think it was another Jirai Gumo. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, if I could reverse the luck from Legend of Blue Eyes, this is going to be my opportunity to do it. Let's get into that deck builder and see what juggernaut of a deck I can put together this time around. Only a few packs left to go, you guys, and uh, our pulls haven't been the greatest, so I'm really hoping we can at least round out some seven-colored fish in these last few packs here. Let's go ahead and hope for the best. There's a Magician of Faith and Holy... 
holy shit, that is our third twin-headed thunder dragon. Technically, we've pulled enough supers to be able to actually get Sangha, Kazijin, and Suijin. We just haven't gotten any of them up until this point, which is really disheartening. Two packs left, though. Let's see if we can get anything else good in here. Ooh, this is this one's kind of a dud. Share the pain's an okay card, but it's kind of a bad piece of removal. It's like worst tribute to the doomed. Last pack. Uh, we might be going into this with a single seven-colored fish, unless I miss something. Let's flip them up. Another Shadow Ghoul, and we, funny enough, did get another super rare being Karibo. So, okay, well, overall, I definitely don't think this is the best Metal Raiders opening we've had, even though we pulled both secret rares. If this was like a real-life box opening, I think people would be losing their minds because that would be unbelievable. But let's go ahead and load up Dueling Book. We have a lot of work to do. All right, folks, while well, I am apparently... 100% tripping about having multiple Magician of Faith, I am not going to complain about the list that I came out to. This is not what I would call as much a control strategy. It is definitely more aggro than I expected, but it definitely has some cool control elements to it that I'm excited about. So we're going to start off with three Jirai Gumo and a Dark Elf. These are probably just the best cards of the set, and no matter what strategy you're going for, these are probably going to end up in there. I have my one Magician of Faith, which is followed up by three Witch of the Black Forest. I actually pulled five of them, I think, in my set, which, you know, could do worse. And Witch of the Black Forest searches for Magician of Faith. It also searches for your Dark Elf and your Jirai Gumo. Just an absolutely across-the-board bonkers card. No way I wasn't going to run three of this. To the Unhappy Maiden, this card is just useful because Alex has a tendency to just, like, try to go for whatever I have face down first to reveal what's up and make his strategy strategies after that. I'll probably take this out after game one, but it is a nice thing to help potentially prevent me from losing board state and has the added advantage of just being another monster to be able to always put on the board. Speaking of just walling up, we've got the Castle of Dark Illusions. Once again, this card is fairly weak in the face of things like Dark Elf and Jirai Gumo, but it will probably survive in the face of something like Seven Colored Fish or a Blue Winged Crown. Suijin is a 2500 attack point beater that also has 2400 defense points. It's great for working around Mirror Force if I think it's there. And it also can reduce my opponent's attack to zero. Not bad. Two Seven Colored Fish, one of the names of the game of this format. Just like Jirai Gumo and Dark Elf, this is a must-have. Two Prevent Rat, it's got a big booty. Three Blue Winged Crown and two Ryukishin Power. These are the next tier of attack power things, and you really need to work a lot of monsters into your deck because we just don't have a lot else to work with. The same line Kajikasi is just the most Chad of all the monsters with 1500 attack and 1200 defense. It's pretty much why I've got him there. And Flame Cerberus is a payoff for all of the slightly weaker monsters than Jirai Gumo. Block attack, I have two of. Once again, it's basically a removal spell, one of the best control pieces that we have available to us. One germ of infection. Even if I had more than these, I probably wouldn't play more than just this one. But it is a card that lets you start running over things like Jirai Gumo. If you have something like a Magician of Faith face down or a Witch of the Black Forest or an Unhappy Maiden, this can buy you a turn basically until you can start running over your opponent's monsters. Paralyzing Potion is by far the better card here. There are not many machines to work with in this format, so I'm not terribly concerned about that particular restriction. Share the Pain is a card that is uniquely good for the cards that I pulled. Because I have things like Magician of Faith and Three Witch of the Black Forest, tributing a monster on my side of the field is not that big a deal. If a Magician of Faith makes it a turn, or if I have a Witch of the Black Forest, even better on the field, Share the Pain is going to be such a good card. Stimpak and Sword of the Deep Seated. They're equipped spells. They make my monsters beefier than my opponent's monsters. I don't need more than that. Mirror Force, the MVP. Such a good card. And then Robin Goblin. This is a card that I expect because of my easy access to control stuff and my easier access to big monsters is going to come into play. My side deck is largely things that I'm going to bring in if any of those strategies looks weaker in the face of Alex. Things like Steel Scorpion, Dream Clown, I might bring in one of since it's searchable off of Witch of the Black. Black Forest. If I think that I can keep it on the field long enough to use its effect, I might bring that in. And the rest are 1500 attack point monsters that aren't Kajikasi, uh, and therefore I can run more of them. That's pretty much what I've got here. I think that this is the deck that's gonna do it. I pulled fairly well. I have a good game plan. These cards synergize with each other surprisingly well, and I think this is gonna do it. Let's duel. You know, if this isn't Yu-Gi-Oh! how Kazuki Takahashi intended, I don't know what else. 
else is not feeling particularly good about this one based off of our polls once we saw everything in totality but this is the deck we're bringing to today's duel ladies and gentlemen and it's as jank as jank gets we tried to find as many incidental synergies as possible but i'm not feeling too great about it so let's go ahead and do the card by card we're starting off with three copies of castle of dark illusion this is primarily here because it has a defense power of 1930 it's not a 2k defender but it does hold off seven colored fish so that's good enough for me it also has this weird ability that gives zombie monsters 200 attack and defense and during each of your next four standby phases each zombie monster gains 200 attack and defense and they last as long as this card is face up on the field so i thought if there's any way to kind of take this to the limit with what my card pool was to give me a slight edge where i may not have one otherwise because the other option is i just play a bunch of like other 1500 attack vanillas and so i figure that having cards that maybe can actually actually put up a fight against what Robert brings might be better than just, you know, hoping that he doesn't have anything good. Speaking of 2k defenders, though, we have Cocoon of Evolution. That is solely what this is here for. Uh, if he has Shield and Sword, we're just fucked, but Shield and Sword is a card that basically just screws you over no matter what, so we'll deal with it. We also have a Crass Clown in here. This, when it's changed from defense to attack, we can return a monster to the opponent's hand. Now, this isn't as good as Dream Clown, which we have three of. This will destroy the monster, but if we're ahead on advantage, this is going to be a way we can maintain tempo by bouncing stuff back. There's very few ways to special summon in this format, and so Crass Clown is good enough. We do have the Dark Elf. This is a 2,000 attack level 4. Does require 1,000 attack points to be able to hit in, but it's not really that bad. We also do have a Magician of Faith to get back our suite of spell cards down below. One Mask Sorcerer to be able to maybe get us a draw, and the best case scenario if we have an open board and can hit with this, or we could buff it up with like a Stim Pack and make it like 1,600 attack. That wouldn't be the worst. Two copies of Mooka Mooka. This is just in here because it can be massive and so if we're on a game state that's kind of at parity if we have a handful of cards Mooka Mooka might be able to hit over some of the larger monsters and so hopefully we don't draw this late game this is better the earlier the game is or if we hit a stalemate this card could help break it in theme with the zombie theme we have two copies of pump king the king of ghosts now this is a monster that again is not fantastic why I don't like it is that it basically crashes with seven colored fish on the surface, but because we have the Castle of Dark Illusions, we can actually buff the Pump King over the seven colored fish. And similar to the castle, this will be able to pump itself up by an additional amount of attack power every single standby phase. So it gets bigger over time. So the most optimistic scenario is if we have Castle and Pump King, and this thing can get to like 3000 attack. And if that's the case, then we might just win the game. But that is very, very optimistic. And I do not think that's going to happen, but we have to try, right? We do have the Sangen as well as the Witch of the Black Forest. These are our two searchers. They can get most of the cards in our deck, so that's nice that we get to pick and choose. We have two Shadow Ghoul. This is probably the better of the tribute monsters. Uh, fun fact, this is a zombie, so Castle can actually boost this as well to make it even bigger. This, the longer the game goes on, the stronger it will get. Ideally, I'd like this to be at least 2,100 attacks, so I want five monsters in Graveyard, just so it could hit over any 2k defenders at the very least. And then, obviously, if we can deal with, like, a summon skull as well. We only need a few more monsters in the grave to get there, and that's pretty realistic if the games do go long, so Shadow Ghoul coming in at two copies isn't the worst. Now, this is a very sus include. It is Steel Scorpion. A non-machine type monster attacking Steel Scorpion will be destroyed at the end phase of your opponent's second turn after the attack. So, it's removal, but it's very, very bad removal. The only reason I like this card is because if the game is slow enough, this card might actually not be that bad, and it's a way to out cards that I have a difficult time outing. Let's say I just set this turn one, and Robert decides to come in with a seven-colored fish. I don't have to waste other removal killing the seven-colored fish. It will take two turns to die, but that means I can save a block attack. I can save a paralyzing potion, or it forces him to actually use the card in a way he wouldn't otherwise would, and so I don't think this card's the worst. Again, I actually kind of like this over just like a 1500 vanilla because at least this will actually deal with a threat on the field, even if it takes a couple turns to do so. I still can't believe we only got one seven colored fish. That is just a sin, but uh, we got to do what we got to do. We also have two armored zombies, so we are playing a couple 1500 uh, just vanillas in here. The thing is, this is actually a zombie, so it does synergize with our Castle of Dark Illusions plan. It has zero defense, which sucks, so for a like block attack, that's going to be a nightmare, but at the very least, but this could 
could potentially be able to go toe to toe with some of Robert's bigger monsters like a seven colored fish if we establish this early before he's able to get to them. And if this gets large enough, this may be a way for us to be able to take over with cards that would otherwise not really be that threatening. One blue winged crown and one Ryukushin power. These are the only two 1600 attack vanillas that I pulled and then one prevent rat in line with the other 2k defense position monsters. For these spells, three block attack. This is one of the best pieces of removal we have. I am very happy I pulled three of this. We can turn anything to defense and should be able to hit over it. Three paralyzing potion. There's almost no spell and trap removal in this format. And so being able to equip this to one of Robert's monsters means it will not be able to attack. So we can stall the game out from there. One ring of magnetism. I'm not super confident that this is that great. One share the pain. This is not a good piece of removal, but I figure it's something at the very least. So I did decide to play it. It can crack open some board states or Robert may have a 2k defender and I'm up ahead on card. So I figure that makes sense. Three stim pack. This is basically removal, but it could last several turns because it buffs our guys up very big, as well as a sort of deep seated. This is the worst stim pack, but it will suffice. The side deck is the only other playable cards I could come up with. Blast Juggler has a way to destroy face up monsters with a thousand or less attack. And so the reason I opted for this is because the 2k defenders being Prevent Rat, Cocoon of Evolution, and the Castle of Dark Illusions all have under a thousand attack. And so if they're face up, Blast Juggler, if Robert can't answer this in a turn, will be able to destroy those monsters. So that's kind of cool. Uh, again, I don't have any way to defend this because there's almost no traps in this set that were at low rarity. So it is, you know, something. I have the Gate Guardian in here, but that's more of a meme than anything. Karibo could come in, but I don't think it's going to be that relevant. I guess we can search it off Sangen or Witch. So if we're in a pinch, I guess it's not the worst. I am playing two Lava and two Swamp Battle Guard. This arguably could be swapped for my other tribute monsters. But again, being able to set up one of these is already hard enough, but being able to set up both. And in addition to that, what sucks is that seven colored fish can crash into both of these. So I'm not feeling too good about it. We'd have to be really far ahead for this combo to work. But if we do get it established, we would be in a very good position. One princess of Tsurugi, this inflicts 500 damage to the opponent for every spell and trap on their field. So if Robert's like me and playing a bunch of like equip cards, like paralyzing potion and like stim pack, then this could deal some damage to maybe clean the game up. Three bistro butcher, this is an 1800 attacker, but it does draw Robert cards, which is why I'm kind of hesitant to play it. If this whole plan with the zombies like doesn't work out, I'll probably throw these in. It's better to hit over a monster and maybe give him cards if you will to actually like try to kill him. But drawing two cards every single time is so bad. And then we have two tremendous fire. This card's not bad because it's better than like Hinotama and the like. 2000 damage from two spells, you know, that's actually a quarter of his life points. And so that could wrap up a game when we have a stalemate. So maybe this this comes in, we'll have to evaluate this situation. So I'm really excited because I don't know what the hell Robert's going to bring to the table. This is a very interesting one. So ladies and gentlemen, it's time to duel. Robert, welcome back to yet a, another episode of Sealed Showdown. You came back for more, buddy, after that scathing, miserable defeat to the all-powerful Flower Wolf. You just didn't have enough, did you? I had to just <laughs> embarrass you one more time. Well, this is your opportunity, buddy, to try to redeem yourself. How are you feeling about this one? Well, Flower Wolf can't save you now, Alex. It and polymerization <laughs> are out of the format, so I don't have to worry sure. about this. This one's gonna be a banger. Metal Raiders was a fascinating set to open because just little things in the difference of balance in what you pulled makes a huge difference in the way that you play out your games with this format, even though it is basically identical to LOB in terms of gameplay. And you said this very eloquently while we were off camera. There's a lot of garbage in this set, but it's more playable garbage than LOB and actually allows for a bit of diversity and maybe some strategic thinking and deck building where LOB may maybe not the case, but I guess we're going to get that when we have more monsters with actual effects, right? And so Indeed. it's going to be an interesting one. Just looking at the card pool and when I did my deck building, I was trying to think about how this is going to play out and it will be very interesting to see. So I'm ready if you are, buddy. This is going to be exciting. I'm ready. All right, let's do it. Let's go ahead and shout out our patron as well. While we do the rock, paper, scissors, it is Nathaniel McKenzie. Thank you so much for the support. What do you got, Robert? What do you got? I got... 
Not how you want to start, buddy. Mm. That's not how he's going to get back in. I will go first. Good luck to you. I don't even know if going first is correct. I don't even know if going first is correct. We're going to see. Oh, we're going to see indeed. Uh, We are drawing. I should remember to do that. Uh, Yikes. Okay. I'm going to, and this may shock you, I'm going to set a card Mm. and I'm going to pass the turn. (laughs) Incredible. (laughs) Never saw that coming. Wow. That's... Um, in the history of hands, that is definitely one of them. I guess the move here is to <laughs> place a humble tea set. And wow, you to go. That's kind of scary. You actually have a a back row. Traps were rather difficult to come by in Metal Raiders, even though it actually has some of the strongest traps that still see play in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. They're all high rarity though, so a bit different than LOB in that regard. I will say. I will draw though. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. What do I'm we want to do? Ready to solemn judgment your Jirai Gumo. If only. I, I can't believe I'm saying this. I actually have plays. I have several plays. different ways that I could play out this hand. That's, I, I don't know what's correct. That's not a word I expected to be used in our Yes, in the plural sets. sense. In yes. the plural sense. I was not yeah. expecting that. I was expecting one uh, minimum, if that. What are you cooking up over there? Some dubious food, let me tell you. <laughs> 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 All right, I'm a bit. I'm a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play a bit defensively here. I'm gonna set very lob style, and I'll pass. Go Indeed. ahead. Indeed. Get just a bunch of prevent rats, Alex. Yeah, it could be anything. Could All be right. Anything. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be the first to put down a beater. Let's hit you okay. with a real kitchen powered. Okay. All right. And I am going to swing into your most recent monster. So it's Witch of the Black Ooh, Forest. We did the nab one of these. Punish. So we do get to go digging here. And I actually don't mind that card at this point. Maybe we go for that. Yeah, I'm down. I'm going to grab a Mooka Mooka. Mooka? I considered this card. It's really good in the early game. Yes, it's very strong. Like in this particular instance where my hand is loaded and I've got nothing else going on, Mooka Mooka is a uh, force. Not bad at all. My all right. damn turn. We'll draw. That's interesting. All right, so we'll run out the Mooka Mooka. Uh, he is getting 300 attack for every card in my hand. I count six. So this Mooka Mooka is actually... 2400 attack. <laughs> what a beast. Who needs tribute summons? I'll attack into the Ryukushin power. I'll take that eight. All right. Okay, so 800. He, he also gains defense too. So this is a good way to counteract like block attack, funny enough. Uh, I'll pass the turn, buddy. Go ahead. Okay. Well, I will introduce you to the first of a whole suite of fascinating control cards that came in this set. I'm going to equip your Muka Muka with Paralyzing Potion. <sighs> yep, that will definitely definitely contain him. Paralyzing Potion is actually a pretty sweet removal card that we have. It's it doesn't technically remove, but it keeps the cards in check. Absolutely. And this alongside things like germ infection actually provide a measure of real gameplay to Metal Raiders. And I'm going to follow that up with the next of my incredible beaters, the Chad himself, Kajikasi. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Old man with a sword. Never gonna beat it. All right. Let's swing into your second Witch of the Black Forest. His powerful arms can crush boulders, but they cannot crush the <laughs> castle, castle of Dark, Dark Illusions, Illusions, you fool! Oh, no. Man, I'm going to take 430 life points of damage. Typically, you only see this when it comes to uh, <laughs> when it comes to the uh, what is it? The solemn judgment games that you're going to be off of 50s or some weird number. But Metal Raiders format, baby, we were still playing with not uh, round numbers, and here yep. we are. So, so I'm going to draw during the standby phase. My castle will trigger, although I don't have any other zombies on the field. But this will be the first of four standby phases where this happens. So I'll use a counter to mark this. All right. Go into the main phase one, and that's actually really interesting. And I'm almost tempted to do this, but it's also kind of scary at the same time. But it's so funny. It's so funny. I don't think I'm going to get another opportunity. Okay. I'm going to tribute the Mooka Mooka. What is going on? What for is... Pump King the Pump King. King. Oh, oh, you've ghost. got the combo. <laughs> you've got the combo. Wow. Yes, because okay. the Castle of Dark Illusion is active. He will gain 100 attack and defense to 1900, which means he can withstand your seven colored fish 
if you did happen to pull it, attack my pumpkin. Oh my goodness. I will take, <laughs> let's see. It's only uh, 1900, okay, so you'll take 400 I'll from take this. 400. Wow. Uh, that, that happened. Okay. That happened. And uh, it's a little bit scary for you because he's going to grow bigger every single every turn single if you turn. can't contain him. That is correct. So I'll go to main phase two and, you know, I'm feeling pretty good on this board. I'll just pass. Go ahead, buddy. Let's see if you can out the pump king. I would say you are doing pretty okay with that board. I did not think we were going to get this combo. I did not think this would that happen. That combo is pretty, <laughs> that is one of two combos that I was like, this could actually be playable. The other one one being harpies. If you were to get the three harpy right. lady and the three elegant egotist, you can get Correct. more field presence than your opponent much more quickly. But this one, I think, is the better of the two. And I'm very excited to see that you're on it. But it does pose a little bit of a problem. It's going to take a lot of work for me to get the same field presence that you have. And even if I do, with that combination, there's no guarantee that I'm actually going to end up with a monster big enough to do it. And you have just a giant gigantic hand. I have a lot of cards. I've got a lot of cards. Okay. Well, I'm going to set a monster and set another incredible disruption card in my turn. On the you level fool. of disruption of paralyzing potion. You absolute fool, okay. because now that we are in the standby phase, both the castle of dark illusion and the pump king will trigger. So that will put the second counter on the castle and the first counter on the pump king. So the castle boosts him by 200 and the pump king himself boosts himself by an extra 100, absolutely which means monstrous. currently he goes to 2200 attack, which I'm going to actually write in the chat That's so we remember this. <laughs> this is going to be tough to keep track of. There's a lot of uh, weird effects in Metal Raiders, and uh, this was definitely a couple of them. All right, so you're playing a little bit defensively here. I mean, I think that's understandable. So I think we're going to make things a little bit worse for you if you're not able to deal with the board appropriately. I'm going okay. to bring out the Armored Zombie. Armored Zombie. Am I actually playing Joey versus Bones right now? Is that what's happening? Am I in a great graveyard right now you could be and then you know it's it's funny i did not think this dream combo would happen but there is zombie synergy in this uh outside of just pump king and the castle because every turn my zombie will get boosted as well as long as that castle remains up so you gotta be careful buddy i will go to the battle phase let's go ahead and hit into your first set here with the pump king okay what am I going to do with this? So this is a witch of my own. Okay. All right. That's going to give you a lot of options to look for, though. He's That's a little bit scary. 2,200 attack points. What do Correct. I have? Correct. And growing every turn. I have Jirai Gumo, which has the power to crash with that. I think while risky, that is probably the move here. I shall add to my hand the meta definer of this set. And he is pretty Gumo. good. He is pretty good. Now, I will hit in with the zombie. I'm not expecting to hit over this, but I just want to just make larger threats. So we'll see if we can get in. Oh, Alex, you'll hit over it because it is another witch of the black Wow, forest. double witch. All right. Okay, Let's sure, sure. Get to searching. And with that, I think our next trick is going to be a dark Elf. Wow. Jirai Gumo Dark Elf. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, so we will go to the second main phase here. Mm -hmm. Jirai Gumo is a very good way to counteract the Pump King, and it's a bit scary. But I think I would like to keep my Pump King around for just a little bit longer. So I'm going to fire Stim Pack and equip it to my Pump King to make it 2,900 attack. And I will pass the turn, buddy. Go ahead. Okay. Um, <laughs> what are you going to do with this? So our Armored Zombie was not present on the field when Castle of Dark Illusions triggered, so it should still be at 1500, correct? That is correct. Okay. He is a 1500 attack monster. What He's very weak. an absolutely garbage design for this card. <laughs> Whose idea was it to make a thing that triggers over four turns, only triggers during the standby phase, and does not blanket apply the additional attack points? Oh, Konami really did not want its players to have fun. Especially, these are the folks that tell us we can't keep notes. What are they Correct. doing to us? Okay, you know what? That's a beefy boy. But I do have to start putting out field presence. I think it's time for the boy himself. Seven colored fish. Let's go. That's a good one. All That's right. a good one. 
and yeah, I'm gonna go into battle phase. Okay. We're going to attack over this armored zombie. I'll take the 300, and my zombie will fall. Okay. And this is a really interesting interaction we're about to deal with between Stimpak, Castle of Dark Illusions, and Pumpkin because he goes up in attack points and then loses 300, leaving him at 100 more than before. Correct. So he gains 300 from both the castle as well as his own effect, but then loses 200 from the stim pack here. So this is going to put him actually to a net gain of a hundred. So he actually goes to 3,000 3, attack. You actually have a blue eyes white dragon on your phone. I do have a blue eyes white dragon. Never thought I would see the day. <sighs> Now, I guess I just want to keep the pressure going in this situation because why not? It seems like we're doing okay. I will match your seven colored fish mm. with one of my own. So let's go ahead and go to the battle phase. We will hit into your seven colored fish. That's not bad, buddy. On attack declaration. You did not pull it. I, I'm not playing around this garbage. Mirror it's force! Fuck! <laughs> fuck off. That it's was a pretty ultra. good combo Are you pulled you out there, Alex, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, pretty good. How does it feel, Alex? How does it feel? I don't care. Feel? There, there is... I, okay, now that I know you have it, I'll consider playing around it. But prior to that, I, I was never playing around Mirror Force. Oh, it absolutely. wasn't worth it. The chances that I pulled it on top of the chances that I drew it were one in too many. Correct. And to follow that up, I am going to drop my Dark Elf. Sure, and this will be able to clear the castle. It absolutely will. I am going to pay a thousand to swing into the boy. The and castle has fallen. Swing in for the first blood I have dealt this game. It's feeling pretty good. Your go, Alex. We will draw. We're gonna have to deal with this somehow. And I think I've got a pretty good way mm. of doing that. We do have Muka Muka. Muka Muka is a hell of a card. It hell is. Of a card. It's pretty good. We will go to battle and uh, I think I'm going to opt. Well, I have an interesting choice here. So my Muka Muka is actually only 2,100. So you do have the option, if you so wish, to bring out the Jiraigumo and clear it. However, if you do do that, you're risking half your life points, which I'm kind of okay with, if I'm going to be completely honest. Then you stack that with the potential Dark Elf having to pay a thousand as well. That's another thing that has to, you know, be considered. I think I'm going to go for the seven colored fish here on, these, on this attack because I'll get a little bit more damage in, but then also too, it just makes it difficult for you to pay all of these different uh, monsters in terms of life points. So I'll let you go ahead. Well, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Okay. Let's go to my turn. I'll draw. That thing is only going to get bigger as long as I don't deal with it. You basically have no incentive to play cards as long as you are beefing up that Muka Muka. Correct. All right. Here's the play. Gonna go to main phase one. Gonna normal summon a second seven colored fish. Okay. And I am going to equip it with a stim pack of my own. Sure. Bringing it All right. up to 2,500 attack points. I'm going to go into battle and I am going to attack over that Muka Muka. It forced you to have something. So I'll take 400 it here. Did. Would you like to attack with the Dark Elf? I will take my thousand to deal 2,000 back. You know, if you're paying half your life points for Jirai Guma, you might as well just use as many life points. <laughs> I might as well have fewer life points to pay. Exactly. All right. Now this is going to get a little bit tricky because that seven color fish is quite big and your dark elf is big as well. So how are we going to deal with either of them is the question. I think I'm going to start by paralyzing potioning your seven colored fish. Not bad. Okay. He's going to get lower over time. So eventually I'll just be able to easily hit over him. So I'm kind of okay with that. It's all right. Then for the follow up here, I'm going to set a card. I know you have the dry Gumo. So I, I will just pass the turn. If you'd like to summon the Jirai Gumo, so be it. Okay, so here I can summon the Jirai Gumo and swing into your monster, guaranteeing that even if it were something like a prevent rat, I would get over it this turn without having to take more than potentially half my life points. However, that's still potentially half my life points, which does not feel great with my seven colored fish sitting not so pretty right there. And I'm going to put a counter on it, and I'm also going to put in the chat, it's at 2300 right now. I think... I think I probably have to. If that's a witch, that's trouble, but it's not trouble that I can't deal with. And I gotta start clearing things again, because that combo between Pumpkin and... <laughs> 
Castle of Dark Illusions. <laughs> was really something, Alex. Really something. It was until you had the fucking mirror force. I guess I got greedy on that Do one. Do you have any spell cards in Grave? Stim Pack would be a pretty good thing to recycle with Moth for you to have it. That's a card that has not yet come into play. Not yet. Uh, I'm going to go into battle phase. I'm going to pay a okay. thousand okay. to attack into your monster. You fool. You thought you were safe, but you killed my steel scorpion. Oh, man. <laughs> the multiple turn effects lingering. Don't end with the castle or the pump king. The steel scorpion will kill your dark elf. In Not now. Three turns. Not on the next end phase, but the following end phase. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute blowout. There is nothing I could do against that. I'm going to set a monster and I will let you go. All right. I will draw. It's not the worst. Okay. So, oh, Steel Scorpion, such a terrible card. <laughs> it's really terrible. I'm it's, frankly it's astounded awful. to see it in your deck. In theory, it has like a use, but not like on this particular board. But it's weird because now it's like I know your Dark Elf's going to die. So, how incentivized am I to actually kill it? I don't know. Yeah. Right? So it's weird. Okay, so I know you still have Jirai Gumo. Something I need to consider. So what I'm guessing you're doing is, I think you set a monster, and your plan next turn is to go Jirai Gumo, and basically it doesn't matter if you lose half your life points. You ideally get over whatever I have set, and then you would then be able to just kill me with whatever the set card is, as well as your Dark Elf. That's what I would put you on. It's not pretty, and it kind of makes Steel Scorpion being the most worthless card ever, which it is. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, I will normal summon a Ryukushin powered, although okay. I'm not happy about it. All right. I'm going to block attack your Dark Elf because okay. this is the only way I can kill it uh, because Steel Scorpion is going to be a little bit too slow here. Okay. All right. And I will pass the turn. Next turn, my seven colored fish goes to slightly less attack. Correct. That in the chat. We'll kill that eventually. To do here. Seven colored fish is bigger than everything but a G Jirai Gumo, and I fully expect that if you were to summon a Jirai Gumo, you would first take care of mine. All right, yeah, let's go for it. I am going to normal summon Jirai Gumo. Here he is. The boy has emerged. And we are going to go to battle phase, and the time okay. has come for the coin flip. All right. Do I have to call, or does it give me... Okay, I have to call it. What are you going to call, buddy? I am feeling tails like what I am about to whoop. Let's go. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah! yeah! Oh, my boy uh, coming through for me. All right, okay. so I'll take 600. And it is your go, Alex. All right, we'll draw. It's not pretty. It's not pretty at all. I will set, and I will pass the turn. Okay. Uh, seven colored fish is going Correct. to. Correct. It's down to 1900. I still can't hit over with anything in my deck for the most part. <laughs> what are we going to do here? I think the move here is to normal summon my blue winged crown. Okay, that's a good one. And I'm going to swing into that monster with blue winged crown. So that was the wrong decision. Ooh. It was my cocoon of evolution. Cocoon of evolution. <laughs> oh. So you will take 400 from that, but. And on the plus side, that means if you lose half your life points on a Jirai Gumo attack, you life lose points. less life points. It's yeah. It's true. Really, that was, it was a five head strategy, Alex. You going to do it? I'm going to do it. All, All right. right. Call it. Uh, let's go tails again. No way. Not two in a row. Mm, yes! There it is. Okay. 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 How many freaking life points? Okay, I have to do so some You'll be at 1335. Message. 1335. Thank you for doing that for me, Alex. You're welcome. And it is your go. Okay, I still don't know how I'm getting out of this, but, you know, it was funny while it lasted. I'll go to main one. I will set another monster, and I'll pass the turn. <laughs> Your seven colored fish is now 1700 attack, so I can hit over it, it with is. another seven colored fish. But I think no matter what happens... I win the game right here. Okay. Um, because I am going to summon yet another Jirai Gumo. Oh my god. <laughs> and it doesn't matter how many life points I lose this turn, Alex, because you're going to lose more. I'm going yeah. into attack. I'll start with my Jirai Gumo. Let's give it a good old heads for the way out. I'll take it. All right. It. it was the Castle of Dark Illusions. You got it, buddy. All you got the righty. first one. that I had that game in the fucking bag until Mirror Force hit it. That that's that 
Mirror Force won you that game. I'm sorry. I so had that. There's no way you were going to be able to stop Pump King at that point. The train was rolling until Mirror Force just end my life. It was You're terrible. allowed to think that. You're allowed to think that. It's terrible. To be fair, if I didn't commit the fish, my Muka Muka would have been big enough to withstand the uh, Jirai Gumo too. So oh, yeah, I guess, I guess I got greedy. That's my fault. I'll go first though. Uh, good luck, buddy. We still have a couple more games, hopefully on our way and I will draw for turn. This is an interesting one. Is one of them Legend of Blue Eyes hands. <laughs> Cut, yeah, that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. All right. I think I'm going to start with a set, and I'll set one face down, and I'll pass it over to you. Having actually drawn this card, I think this was a terrible idea to put it in my deck. <laughs> <laughs> You know how when you're like theorioing and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. And then you actually get to it and you're like, wow, I was tripping. Yeah, that's how I felt about Steel Scorpion in the last game. Yep. You know, <laughs> at least it accomplishes things. I think I am going to open with our good friend, Blue Winged Crown. Sure. And I am going to go into battle phase and I am going to attack into your Witch of the Black Forest. It's my armored zombie, as armored a matter of fact. Armored zombie. Wow. That is, that must be a legend. Legend of Blue Eyes hand you got there. I am going to, in main phase two, I'm going to set a card behind my blue winged crown and let you go. I think I was uh, being a bit optimistic that that would happen. You did set first in the first game, though, so it could have happened. Could have happened. All right. How are we going to deal with this now? I mean, I've got to play, but I don't think it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> The story of like our last two episodes. Basically, I don't know if I can just not do anything, though. Part of me is tempted to pass, but, I mean, taking two big hits isn't exactly ideal either. I feel for you. I mean, you led with Blue Winged Crown. I mean, maybe that's, like, one of your better cards. I mean, you have what? You, well, I saw, what, two Jirai Gumos, a Dark Elf, at least one seven-colored fish. So, I mean, there's probably plenty of stuff lurking in your hand. You probably just led with the lowest attack thing. I'm going to pass. Okay, buddy. All right, these are plays. And by plays, I mean normal summoning a 1600 attack point monster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the best okay. plays in the format. All right, we're going to go into battle phase. And if you have a mirror force, you have a mirror force. I'll think I'll take the damage for now. Okay, sounds good. I am going to end my turn there. All right, we'll draw. Oh my God. This is not going well. Well, I'm going to normal summon a Ryukushin powered of my own. Okay. I'm going to block attack your Ryukushin power. Ooh, spicy. <laughs> and I will hit the Ryukushin powered. Okay. Um, goodbye, Ryukushin powered. Aim to I'll set a new superior. one and I'll pass it over. Okay. I a normal summon seven colored fish. Figured you had one of those lurking in the hand, sure. And I'm going to go into battle phase, and I'm going to attack a Ryukishin powered. I'll take the two, and then I'll take the 16. It is your go, Aleximo. I will draw. That's not a bad one. Right on time. Ooh, could be worse. Let's hit the crown. Okay, I will take 200. And with that, I will pass the turn. I'm going to draw for turn. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, do I commit that now? No, I definitely want to do that now. Okay, main one. I am going to set a monster face down. Okay. And for my next trick, Alex, I am going to activate Share the Pain. Shit. Yep, this card is so good when you're ahead, but it so is bad so when you're behind. so good. And in combination with which it is an absolute blowout. Yep. Uh, and I am going to send my unhappy maiden to Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to send a witch off of that, but okay. Oh, okay. man, do I wish. Okay, I'm going to go into battle phase, and I'm going to swing in with that seven. I will fish. take the 18. All right, and it is your go. Better be a good one. Well, it's not a good one. I will normal summon Dream Clown. Ooh, the clown control angle. Not bad at all. I will share the pain. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Go ahead. <laughs> well, Alex, uh, I am truly sorry. <laughs> I will go to battle face. Uh -huh. I am going to declare an attack and flip a coin. Heads always shreds, my man. Heads always they don't shred. I will take 4,000 and eat the world's most impactful mirror force. Uh, there we go. How did I do that math wrong? Oh, I'll pitch a Karibo. Yeah, that works. Okay, hold up. I need to actually learn how to do math because I took life points at the beginning of this. That's 3,900. A Karibo. Okay, okay. Punish me, 
for my hubris. I was waiting for the delayed reaction. <laughs> Punishing me for my hubris. Okay. Well, that's 4,000 life points down nearly for not a lot of effect. Yeah, Give me that's your true. Worst. I mean, to be fair, it buys me uh, a little bit of time. I don't know if it buys me enough time, but I'll pass the turn. It does add that. All right, what do I got? Well, that's also a card. I suppose it's time for another cheer I go. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say, yeah. Alex? It's just, it's a game of skill. What can I say? All right, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to swing in and uh, flip another coin. And I didn't call it. Uh, so you I'm did. Gonna... It, you got it. You got it. Oh, I, okay. I have nothing. You're You're fine. My hand was clogged with Ooh, these idiots. Uh, yeah. Funny, Shadow Ghoul is actually a zombie, so it gets boosted it by is. the Castle of Dark Illusion, which is kind of cool. Honestly, uh, you came out of this with by far the cooler looking strategy. Oh and yeah, I summoned Pumpkin with Castle of Dark Illusion. I won this in the eyes of the fans at this point. You were a winner like, at heart, Alex. Yeah, I'm definitely a winner at heart, but not in this episode, unfortunately. Okay, can I just, I, I, need, a, I need a vent about this. Okay. I got one seven colored fish. Oh no. One Dark Elf, zero Jirai Gumo. Oh no, Alex. So it was rough. I'm so sorry. It was a rough one. It was a rough one. Uh, commons are obviously not guaranteed by any stretch, especially in these no. earlier sets when they're very, uh, have a very high card count to them as well. Yeah. Uh, this was also an issue in like progression series as well for that reason. And yeah, you just kind of have to literally deal with the cards that you're dealt with. And uh, I tried my best. I did get full play sets of like block attack and paralyzing potion. Dream mm -hmm. Clown is only good when you have a way to protect it. And uh, yeah. this set is very trap light specifically. And so unless I got into a situation where I like paralyzing potioned one of your things when we're both like on low resources and then was able to stick dream clown. Yeah, it's it's similar to share the pain, right? Dream Clown's very good when you're ahead, but not the best card when you're behind, especially if you have no way to protect it. And so I, I just had to try to find any bits of removal. That's why I like even considered the steel scorpions, because yeah. if I can steal scorpion something and then like wall up, if I have a way to be able to not die, hence the Karibo, hence the 2k walls then steel scorpion like th the first game went on for several turns it's very likely that a steel scorpion maybe can kill something if you have time but mm -hmm. as your life points get lower and lower that time becomes much and much more of a finite resource that's getting depleted very rapidly and so just wasn't happening i threw the tremendous fires in from the side deck because you're playing jirai gumos and hopefully that you were going to drain yourself so much that i could just kill you with this but uh unfortunately that didn't move. happen i didn't think yeah. it was that bad i didn't think you it was that bad your pull, your, your really pull cool seemed you infinitely better oh though. alex <laughs> I almost feel bad about this. So in my hand, the reason why I was so fast and loose with my uh, shared the pain, I got a magician of faith. Oh my God. And then I got not one, not two. <laughs> But three Witch of the Black Shut Forest. up. Three? I got one Witch and one Sangen. And I'm like, I oh, thought that was pretty good. I three? actually, to be fair, I didn't get three Witch of the Black Forest. I think I got five Witch of the Black oh, Forest. Oh, fantastic. Good thing we have card limitations. All right. <laughs> And then I got a, a card that did not come up in the slightest in Suogen. Uh, Suogen, I, I talked about this though. These are actually playable in Metal Raiders specifically because removal is so limited. And also these just like, you can't just take like a Jurai Gumo and a Dark Elf and like stim pack it and hit it over because of its yeah. effect. The effect actually matters on these. So there are tribute monsters that have protection. So I didn't pull these, but I pulled fucking Gate Guardian. So oh, no. yeah, can't <laughs> play that. Curse. Guess what? I also pulled the other secret rare being Thousand Dragon. Oh, no. And since you pulled play sets, Robert, I pulled not one, no. not two, no. but three no. twin headed Thunder Dragons oh, in no. addition to that. Oh, I feel so bad, Alex. Oh, no. <laughs> This is what we signed up for in Sealed Showdown, right? It this is what is we signed up for. What we signed up for. It Fuck is me, indeed. Dude. Fuck wow. me. Okay. My game plan boiled down to trying to just find these incidental zombie synergies. I actually pulled two Shadow Ghoul, which is kind of cool. And Shadow Ghoul is a tribute monster that gets very scary in like the mid to late game because think if I was able to drop one of these last game when our graveyard had like 10 plus monsters in it, this thing gets massive. So the problem is actually sticking a monster to be able to summon it because when you're behind in this format you uh fall behind very quickly but yeah it it just it was not great the, the metal raiders was not a good 
around for Alex uh, in the slightest. Not kind to you in the slightest. No. Wow. We high rolled in the first game very well and lost to Mirror Force in a very punishing. Was this Mirror Force and you just never used it? No, I think it was a, it, yeah, it was a paralyzing potion. Oh, okay. So just another bluff. But All I right. figure when your opponent knows you have Mirror Force, you just start setting cards. Yep. <laughs> and if yep. you had Heavy Storm, you had Heavy Storm. I uh, also did get a Magician of Faith, so I was playing that. Okay. Uh, I think okay. I got like two or three Mask of Darkness, but guess what? I think I pulled one trap in 24 packs being oh, fake no. trap, so. Oh, yeah. I considered yeah. fake trap, but I don't remember. I don't think that actually works under Heavy Storm. Yeah, and that would also require us to pull Heavy Storm, so yeah. that's another problem. Like, I, I don't <laughs> think there's any other spell and trap removal in this entire set, so it was a weird one. I will say the interactions with Share the Pain are really interesting in the set. Yeah. I'm a little sad we didn't get to show it off properly, because I was realizing, so I played two in the main deck because I got three Witch, so like, why not? Right. Um, but then I realized if your opponent hits your monster with Paralyzing Potion, or if you're sitting with a stim pack on your monster or if your opponent uses germ infection those are three situations under which share the pain becomes an actually fairly good removal card sure um, and sure. so i brought in the third one i ditched one of my two unhappy maidens <laughs> and i also had robin goblin in my main deck wow I was that's just... a rare too that card's scary that that card would have just like been if you ever established this and like you like it's game over like this this card gets out of hand so quickly well, what's funny is i had three of it and i main decked two of it and i realized Robert, coming into the calm <laughs> down bro <laughs> I realized coming into the side deck, I was just like, this card probably is not that good anymore. But like, you know, this card can blow out some games. And really the calculus there was if I establish a board before you do, it's basically hand control before hand control is a thing. Not uh, even necessarily though, because Robin Goblin triggers whenever a monster deals damage to the opponent. And that accounts when it's being attacked. So like, even if you set like a, a 2K defender and I attack into it, Goblin triggers. Yeah, so like, I mean, right. So like, even exactly. then it's still good. So like, I would have 100% went all in on three of this if I actually pulled it, but unfortunately I didn't. Share the Pain's also nice too. I only pulled one Share the Pain and I, so I was oh. playing that too. But to be fair, I think it's weird. I do agree with you that it makes use of cards that are hit by Paralyzing Potion because otherwise they wouldn't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's also good that if you establish like parity and you're both just like in a setting war or like, let's say you set this Faith and then flipped it and got a card. Now you can Share the Pain away the Faith to get even more more value out of it because otherwise unless you tribute summon you're not going to be able to do anything else with that faith anyway so you might as well just share the pain it away exactly uh, so yeah and so that was the situation and yeah so and then for me the pumpkin strat aside from like the zombie synergy i figure pumpkin's big enough to get over seven colored fish and hopefully if you don't have jirai guma or dark elf fast enough it's able to run over those as well so that's why i went down this route and uh shadow ghoul kind of the same logic just uh waiting for the graveyard to fill so i just had to find ways to kind Kind of go over the top of your deck assuming that you pulled like good cards compared to me and uh yeah uh, it just didn't happen i i would say that i pulled good cards compared to you yeah i would say you did as well bro. <laughs> I, I was freaking out as, well. as i was doing the opening i thought that i pulled three magician of faith and i was like oh man this is going to be the sickest control strat that this format's ever seen i pulled one <laughs> Oh. Which is not bad, but I no. was just like, I was just like, oh man, I have such a good and interesting strategy, and I ended up playing normal summon Jirai Gumo. <laughs> but it's it's interesting though, seeing how we have to play Metal Raiders without Lob, right? Because most of the time, when you're watching progression series or any series that's similar to you know anything that we're doing here, typically they're bundled together, right? And so you're still seeing interactions with Dark Hole, with Raigeki, maybe a Monster Reborn or a Pot of Greed, or you know, just the other like good staple cards you carried over from LOB, the very few that you do. And so it's fascinating to see Metal Raiders by itself, right? And that's kind of the whole spirit of this series is trying to figure out how you can just make the best of the cards that you're dealt in these 24 packs that we get. And this is going to get very interesting the later down the line we get, because oh, yeah. I mean, some of these sets are just like horrendous when it comes to like any sort of <laughs> removal, because I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh! just as a card game is an eternal format so they didn't really like always have removal in some sets and finding the strategies and the competitive edge for each of us depending on our polls is going to get very funny very quickly i feel <laughs> 
<laughs> and I am very much looking forward to whatever the meta is that come out of our next set. Because Alex, Spell Ruler is our next set. And if Magic Legend Ruler, of sir. Eyes, Magic Ruler. Magic Ruler. Yes, that's right. I have ashamed my generation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Spell Ruler is our next set. And if Legend of Blue Eyes was about defense points and garbage, and Metal Raiders was about attack points and garbage, Spell Ruler is about back row and garbage. Because looking through this set, we're looking forward to a lot of very good spell cards and very few monsters that are actually worth putting on the board. And that includes Ritual Summons. And if yes. you you were pulling out Flower Wolf in Legend of Blue Eyes and f fucking Castle of Dark Illusions <laughs> Pumpkin in Metal Raiders. Oh man, I am so looking forward to seeing you drop the legend that is Hungry Burger. You know, it might be the Crab Turtle meta. I'm not gonna mm -hmm. lie to you. I, I mean, the ritual monsters are big. They're they very, big. well, Crab they Turtle beefy. is. Hungry Burger and Performance of Sword kind of uh, leave a bit to be desired, yeah. but Crab Turtle's 24. 550, 2450, like he's large. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you do need to have the requirements for it, but like Sonic Bird is in the set too, so you can search him out. I think Magic Ruler is going to be interesting, not just because of the fact that we have a new meta in potentially ritual summoning, but also in the fact that our spell pulls are going to be fucking crazy. Absurd. You might be over here pulling all the hand destruction stuff. I might be <laughs> over here pulling like Snatch Steel, and it's going to be a war over like these power spells and who can just pull the crazier stuff there and i can't wait to see what's gonna happen it's going to be a I blast there are so, so many good cards in there it's gonna be so much fun next week is gonna be a great time and y'all will not want to miss it so guys that's gonna do it for this episode of sealed showdown the series is now tied at one to one robert managed to come back with the 2-0 after i 2 0 would him previously you're not gonna want to miss magic ruler that one's going to be a bloodbath but we do have to shout out our patrons as always so big shout out to shout out 1317 sean alling jr show tagus and gay Cameron Smith, Joshua Schley, Tim 0 x 3 Ika Iron Fang, Pony Stark, Ian Musa, Michael Dente, Dan the Manhoven, Part 2, Synchro Guy, Mystic Walk, Sylvia Wilds, Draconic, Dolly Wop, Dragon Lord, Indiana Taisho, Jarvis Martin, Logan Thomas, Peter Gregory, Thomas Nelson, Jordan Coons, Kelvin, Iron Bladesman, Pure Ace, Jesse Wood, True Nerdgasm, Benjamin Fuller, Brother Paul, Chris Hood, Damage Step, Kalut, Henry Roaming, Lumpy, Nehru Celeste, Shane Reese, Cole T, David Liu, Rockley 325, Lane Rogers, Brett Havy, I Sidon, Gren Maju in Salad, Sky Rose, Dylan Hunter, Garthox, DOW, Gigabyte9436, John 2 based, Apathy Astro, Dace Allen, and Brody Eastwood. Thank you all so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.